What a strange generation of graphics cards. I know I'm late to this. The week of embargo, we got hit with more snowstorms and my kiddo was out of school as a result, but I'm here now, just in time for the non-TI 5070 launch. Nope, I missed that one too. The TLDR here is that the NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti is slightly better than last generation's RTX 4080 in creative workloads, but there are a couple scenarios where the RTX 4080 beats it. Let's speedrun this RTX 5070 Ti review. I'm specifically using the ASUS non-overclocked model here. First up, video editing. Using Puget Bench, Puget Systems benchmark for creative applications, we see the RTX 5070 Ti get a slam dunk over the RTX 4080 in video editing performance and mostly surpass the RTX 4090 even just narrowly trailing behind the RTX 5080. This is quite impressive from an architecture standpoint, especially since the 5070 Ti does not have dual video decoders like the RTX 5090 does. It has dual encoders, but not decoders, meaning it can encode or compress video faster than ever, but doesn't see major significant improvements to playback speed compared to last generation. Still, it's impressive to see such results up against the RTX 4090 despite having significantly less VRAM. This is most likely due to the one little decode upgrade that this card does have, and that's the ability to decode 422 chroma subsampled footage in hardware. This is something that has been requested for ages, as most cameras shoot 422 video these days, and is finally being delivered with the RTX 50 series cards. The trend continues into the NVIDIA sample 422 export project that I demoed in the last review, and again into my custom project export, where it beats everything except the 5080, 5090, and my M2 Ultra Max Studio at HEVC, and then inexplicably performed a little bit better than even the RTX 5080 when exporting AV1 and both HEVC and AV1 in their UHQ modes. Very odd. So the 5070 Ti is definitely a great value compared to previous generations and even the RTX 5080 for video editing, if that's what you're buying it for. For generative AI, we see the 5070 Ti actually fall just a hair behind the RTX 4080 for image generation using the Procyon Floating Point 16 benchmark, but then passing the 4080 up again in Procyon's AI text generation benchmarks. Blender's 3D rendering benchmarks again see the 5070 Ti fall behind the RTX 4080. This is a still a significant leap over even the RTX 3090 from the generation prior, but doesn't quite keep up with the 80 tier card of last generation. So if you plan on doing 3D work, I'd either aim for the higher up 50 series cards or stick with the 4080 range or higher in this case. If you're game streaming, however, the 5070 Ti would still be a bit of an upgrade over the 4080. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 5070 Ti sees a hair better in-game performance on its own, and then takes the least performance impact of any card I've tested thus far once you start encoding with OBS. Cyberpunk 2077 sees similar results with the 5070 Ti being able to just barely nudge out the RTX 4080, but also take the lowest performance penalty to streaming here. Clearly this game is quite variable in its performance while streaming, however, so... Eh. Then when testing Black Myth Wukong, the 5070 Ti has a nearly negligible performance bump above the RTX 4080, with minimum FPS targets matching the RTX 4080. I'll reserve the raw encoder speed data for like FFmpeg and stuff for an upcoming deep dive into a bunch of GPUs and their encoding power, so we'll omit that from this review for now. All in all, the RTX 5070 Ti might be a good choice if you were considering something like the RTX 4080 for creative work, but could get this one cheaper. With the GPU market being how it is right now, I'm not sure how realistic that is. Honestly, at this point, it feels kind of ridiculous to have so many GPUs in each generation, just at all. Like, it, it, it's kind of always felt that way, but like, what is the point of nickel and diming everyone for tiny performance differences between cards here? How does this help the consumer? I've always been of the mind that companies should offer a couple to a few different distinct models, and the consumer should just save up if they want the pricier model, or wait for it to go on sale, or buy it used. The, 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 this inflated product stack is just a mess to navigate when things come out at all, and then when we get generations like this which aren't necessarily significant leaps in performance, no one is happy as the countless sensationally titled reviews of these graphics cards the past couple months have gone to show. Nvidia can't really offer lower than 16 gigabytes of VRAM on most of these cards now just due to the demand of hardware for games, which then makes the fact that 16 gigabytes is still the top end until you get to the 5090 makes that fact kind of ridiculous. I don't know what the solution is, but something's got to give here. Can we just go back to a few different cards that play to their budgets perfectly? Link to my 5080 and 5090 creator review is linked in the description. I'll have encoder performance deep dive videos coming soon. Remember to be kind. Rewind.